right, chat. What's going on, man? Thank you for coming in and being a bit of a guinea pig for this podcast area. You showed interest before, and I think that's awesome. So come on, let's let's do it. Addison, thanks for having me, man. Yeah, it's about a 60-degree rainy day here in Anger, and I don't have a whole lot shaking today, but I figured, hey, let's come down and see what Mr. Allgood's got shaking, and it looks like this studio here is looking pretty pretty sweet, man. What 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 made you want to do this, man? Where'd you, where'd you come up with this? So, it was actually the guy I was working for last year, but his, his main point was, I mean, he saw the club and everything in here, the Nutrition Club, the Shakes, the Tees, blah, blah, but he also saw the other 1,800 square feet that we weren't using, and he was like, well, have you ever heard of a WeWork, and you ever heard of this, and that's when I started doing my research, and one of the things he had got on there was a podcasting studio, and I was like, well, Andrew definitely ain't got that yet, so might as well stay ahead with all the houses that are coming this way. I guess my ultimate goal for this is I did run for town a couple years ago, and one of my stances was bringing more than houses to Andrew, bringing businesses to Andrew. So if this when when this takes off i hope to i'd love to turn downtown andrew into a small business center of hart county man the co-working space and if i could lay hands on that building next door i could put a put a door in the wall expand the space yeah that's just where i'm going i hope i hope it i hope it hope it flies well hey you gotta you know put your best foot forward but Sitting across from me. Now, a couple of things I want to talk about. First thing I want to talk about is this man has a true entrepreneurial spirit. I look at them expand and, and do right by the town and grow the downtown is great. Secondly, I was going to bring the vinyl down, but this man looks a lot like Chris Stapleton. So I don't know if anybody's ever told him that. If you see this and you like him, probably bring him some of that Tennessee whiskey. He'd probably love that. Uh, I'm not sure if you are a whiskey guy, but I think next time I see Addison, I'm going to bring a hat. Okay, because I think I think oh, we can play okay. off of the Stapleton thing. It's really really cool, and your sound, your draw is very similar. Okay, so, you know, funny story. I actually, my wife and I had tickets to go see Stapleton front row, and it was at Greensboro Coliseum. We were all pumped up, nice. and unfortunately, her father got sick, so I couldn't make the concert. Now I'm not going to be mean because my wife might hear this, but I almost snuck out and went to the concert, but. <laughs> I, I valued my life a little bit too much and put family first, as everybody says. Always put family first, everyone. Yeah, that's what you got to do. That's what you got to do. So, so that, well, you're you're from you ain't from around here, are you? No. <laughs> no, I am a transplant. I am originally from New York. I was born in one of the boroughs, Queens, to be exact. At approximately five or six months old. True story. My father is a retired squad detective. And when I was less than a year, about four or five months, somebody on one of his cases followed my mom home. Long story short, guy broke in, tried to take us out. Dang. Dad came up the block with his partner just by chance, and that gentleman has never been seen again. So, after that, my mother's grandparents, uh, my mother's parents, my grandparents decided to move up to Orange County, New York. Okay. And I moved into a small town called Washingtonville, which shout out to Washingtonville. Brotherhood Winery is the oldest winery in America. Nice. So I pretty much grew up in a tourist town. It was cool. You meet different people from different backgrounds, parts of the world, parts of the states, United States. God bless America. It's it's been good. New York. So is it as rednecky upstate there as it is out here? It, it it's a different type of rednecky. Okay. Um, New York is. Let me start with this. Right. Nobody ever retires and moves north. If you do, I'm sorry. You did the wrong thing, but <laughs> <laughs> the pace of New York is just so fast that you just don't live as long as you could. I mean, it's everything is two steps ahead. You have to keep moving, keep doing this, keep doing that. It's a lot of stress on the body and the mind. It's very stressful. I bet. So when I moved down here from New York, I instantly had a relief of stress. You know, I was 31 when we moved down here. My wife, my children, we moved down here and. It was just so much better. And even though I grew up in Orange County, which was a country town, mm -hmm. you still had that New York mentality. And most of the people who worked in Manhattan lived in Orange County because it was a little bit cheaper than living in the city. Oh, yeah. So we, I grew up around a lot of uh, police officers, firemen, sanitation, construction. 
any kind of job at that point that had a pension, which I think they're doing away now, it's just 401ks. Oh, that's awesome. Some people are grandfathered in, but the new guys, sorry new guys, they're not getting that, that pension. And that was the big draw in New York in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, and to the mid-90s was you went in there, you did your 20, 25 years, got your Social Security, got your pension, and you're off to the races, enjoy the rest of your life. So that's been pulled as of recently is what I've heard. That, that's, a, that's a shame. The way, the, way, the way a lot of things are going right now is a shame. We're not going to get political or get, you know, but it's just, shoot, 38 this year. I'm going to be 38 this year, and I'm already feeling like an old man. I was 38 once. <laughs> once. <laughs> once. <laughs> back yonder you know, several years ago. Yeah. You know, back in my day, I was, I was a contender. <laughs> I was a real guy. No, I'm just, that sounds like my grandfather, which is funny. It's a Chet's grandfather here. It's been a horrible life. Have a good one. Okay. No, he was, he was funny. Quick story. Cause this is cool talking with Janison, but my grandfather was actually the general foreman at the World Trade Center. So okay. he was a gentleman named John Tishman. Shout out to Tishman Construction. Still around. Him and John built half of Manhattan. So Madison Square Garden, 60 Wall Street, World Trade Center old uh, sports bar called the All-Star Cafe, if anybody remembers that. I don't. I was there. It was around for about two years. Wayne Gretzky, Ken Griffey Jr., and others I can't remember, and either can anybody else listening to this probably remember, because I'm a little bit older. Like I said, above 38. Less than 30. Less than 44. So I'll just give you that. that little range. Somewhere, somewhere in there. Somewhere in there. But yeah, it was um, just really interesting growing up around construction. Everybody in my family and friends thought I would be, you know, the next construction guy, but nah. Nah. Big shoes to fill. My grandfather, Bill White. Shout out to Bill White, wherever he is in the upper thresholds of the heavens looking down, still smacking me around and trying to give me lessons through whatever. He he was a big lesson guy. You know, oh, yeah. he'd always help you, but you learned the lesson first before he helped you. That was just kind of his style, and I'm like that kind of with my kids a little bit, too. And then you always do something, and then you hear them in the back of your head. Yeah, I mean, every time my children leave the lights on, I can <laughs> hear him. What are you doing? You're not paying this bill. Turn that light off. And he used to, like, beat me to a pulp for leaving the kitchen light on because I went into the living room to turn that light on. So I, I don't get it. Yeah. Yeah, can't can't beat the kids nowadays. No, that, I, I think it's really cool, like, all the interaction you did with some like the famous famous folks and big names up up in New York I never really I did I was out in California for 10 years in the Central Valley about two and a half hours east of San Francisco Bay and a guy I met this guy I can't remember where I met him anyway he did a security he did a, he had ran a security force and I got a call and he says hey Addison do you want to work security for the San Francisco Giants parade since they won, there's going to be a parade and there's going to be a VIP section and you're going to have to put a suit on and, you know, dress nice. Like, sure, let's do it, you know. I, I saw a bunch of famous people that I couldn't put a name to. I remember a couple of kids kept trying to sneak in. I kept walking up to them and just standing next to them. I was like, you going again, huh? That's right. <laughs> About the third time, I was just like, just don't be nothing stupid. You know, just... Nice. You were you were the nice guy. Yeah, I like that. I try to be the nice guy. I can be a real jerk. It takes it takes a while to get there, but yeah. I, th- I, th- I think everybody has that threshold. Yeah. It's just human nature, you know. Yeah. You get to that point where I'm I'm pretty patient too, for the most part, and you get to a point where you kind of have to, you know, make a decision. But most people these days are aware of that. You get mostly the younger crowd sometimes might try to challenge you a little bit more than the. The senior, not senior, but the more seasoned mm. citizens of the world. But yeah, I that's a cool that's cool that you did that. I mean, I I was very blessed and very fortunate in New York to. I thought that was my car getting robbed. It's not somebody else's. Oh well, because he should have got low jack. Anyway, as I'm watching somebody's car be stolen, I'm just going to keep going. Anyway, it's a good I, view. It's a good view. I mean, I I probably wouldn't want to testify because it looks like the guy's a little bit upset. But maybe I'm just imagining this. Anyway, back to where I was. <laughs> where I was I think I was on to oh yeah right so I got to meet a lot of cool people one thing I learned as a as a young child back in March is a lot of 
I guess you would say famous people are really insecure. You know, they come off mm-hmm. very confident and, and, you know, ready to go when you see them on TV or you see them, you know, in the public space. But when they're kind of just on their own, you get to meet them on the side. Totally different vibe, man. I've met guys that you think would just be on top of the world, but really just humble, quiet. But it's it's not an act for the cameras, but it's an over-exaggeration of their personality. Got it. And it's interesting to see that. You know, I, I had the opportunity one time to meet Phil Simms, quarterback Giants. Okay. Super. When I met him, he was just a really cool guy on down the earth. My aunt knew him from work at CBS. My aunt worked at CBS for 50 years and a month. But when the camera went on, he was doing his NFL analyst thing. It was like super stuck. He just totally turned it on. But off camera, mild-mannered guy, just chilled out, cool. And, you know, he got bombarded by football fans. Obviously, you know, the Giants are a huge draw in New York. I'm sorry, Jets fans, but they're actually doing better. But anyway, the Giants were always a big draw. It is called Giant Stadium. It used to be not Jet Stadium. But anyway, I digress. Oh, <laughs> But it was cool. It was cool meeting people, athletes, met some good actors, met some bad actors. I didn't tell them they were bad, but they were not that good. Some overrated people, and no, I'm just kidding, I'm not going to pick. But it was it was interesting, man. It's really cool. But when I go home, well, I'm home here. I, I do consider Andrew in the South my home. But when I go back to my original home, it's interesting because it's a whole different vibe, man. Back to the motherland. The mother. <laughs> when I get back on the ship <laughs> and go back to the motherland with goods and services to offer. <laughs> That's all I got. No, it's it's cool though. It's just a totally different vibe. It's just uh, I will say to anybody who's never been to New York, it's a great place to visit. Okay, place to live. I would say that. Yeah, it's, it's about like California. It's a great, great place to visit. Beautiful weather. The the geography is amazing. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's kind of kind of like North Carolina. It's a, two hours to the beach, two hours to the mountains. Yep. I think my favorite place in, in uh, California was this place called Copperopolis, mm-hmm. right? And it was this river that flowed through this gorge, but the river was 45 feet deep, three feet from the edge of the shore. Like, it just shot down. Oh. So you, there was a bunch of cliff diving and rope swings and accidents happened. <laughs> there was alcohol involved. Hmm. Now I'll tell you just because this is this is one of the stupid things from my past. We were we were having we were having a little fun, and I decided to go up on the rope swing. We've actually got to climb these rocks to get up to where you jump off for the rope swing. I did it a few times before. It was freaking awesome. It was fun. It was so great. You get so much air. And, well, I guess I had one too many and went up there and grabbed the rope and I turned around and I lost my balance. Oh. But I didn't let go of the rope. So I bounced my way down the hill and into the water and I remember hitting the water and it was just this oh, it was so much pain. So, what happened next? Did somebody dive in? and? No. They were laughing. Wow. That's a good yeah. friend, by the way. Good friends do that. You know, they help yeah. they just laugh. <laughs> <laughs> you good? That's it. Uh, yeah. yeah. That's, that's, it. that's what they did. If, yeah. if I hadn't uh, got up through explicatives their way, then then uh, they would have checked on me. But, you know. Yeah. And, and they just kind of see if there's going to be some movement within like eh, 45 to 60 seconds. And then that that's usually my threshold. <laughs> Not to say I would do that, but you know, after a minute, there's no movement. Eh, you might want to see what's going on. So any moments of outstanding, I mean, we'll just say epiphanies or bright ideas from your past that ended up being funny 20 years later? Yes. Let me think. There's been a couple. I'll put it this way. I've had a couple of missed opportunities. This one wasn't quite 20 years ago. It was actually here in North Carolina. So I was a appliance repairman, and I went to Raleigh okay. to a gentleman's you know, like a penthouse apartment. Big Samsung TV, like a 75-inch TV. It was like one of the first ones they had made that big. So oh, wow. we're up there, and our brother was with me, and we were fixing his TV, and we got done. As I looked around his penthouse, he had all this cool memorabilia. He had, like, Spider-Man number one, Hulk number one. Super- he had all these number one comic books. So I was like, okay, cool. The guy, you know, he's got a legit collection. Or he's really good at knockoffs. Yeah. So yeah. Um, he asked us toward the end, you know, we, we got us finished up. So we're done. We're good to go. And he hands me his card. And he says, well, you know, I do this thing called Bitcoin. Oh, Lord. And I was like, okay. And he's like, well, how do you think I afford all this? He was cool about it. He wasn't like a jerk. 
I said, well, I don't know if I'm going to... He's like, well, it's really cheap right now. It's going to go up. It's, you know, it's real money. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I went home, lost the card. Couldn't tell you where it is. I got I got a... But you, you mentioned Bitcoin. I got a buddy, James, and he he was trying to get me into it, man. He's just like, it's going to go up. It's going to go up. And this was this was after that first initial spike when it went up from you know point zero 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 five cents to you know ten grand. Well, this was oh shoot, this was five six years ago. It was thirty six hundred dollars, maybe twenty eight hundred dollars. And I, I bought into it for a minute, and every time I tried to trade it, I'd lose it, and I was just like, you know what, I'm done, I'm done. And then COVID happened, and what's it sitting at right now? Like sixty five, seventy thousand. Yeah, it's pushing, pushing a little bit hard. There. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I know we gotta wrap it up. But one more quick. This isn't yeah, a blown yeah, opportunity. Yeah. This is just a cool, cool story. So my uncle, who passed away three years ago in, in July, great guy, really smart guy. It was middle of COVID, and my cousin and myself were on a Zoom call with him. And he says, you know, real financial savvy guy. He says, you know, how you guys doing? You know, it's financially, you guys have work, and you're doing this and doing that. And we're like, oh, yeah, we're good. We're doing well. Well, what about you? You're retired on a fixed income, you know, yada, yada, yada. He also worked for CBS, by the way, so he was doing okay anyway. But we had to be asking, you know, how you doing, how your stock's doing, things like that. He says, well, you know, I'm, I'm doing all right. You know, I made an investment about 20 years ago, and it's doing well. He says, I had a, you know, a hunch that this thing was going to take off, and I bought a, a lot of stock. I can't quantify what he said, but when he said a lot, his eyebrows raised, so I'm thinking it was a good amount. Mm -hmm. And he says, yeah, it was Netflix before uh, they went to streaming. When they were still doing DVDs, and they were thinking about the streaming thing, he became one of the primary investors in Netflix. Wow. And like I said, he's passed on now, and my aunt is still up in New York and is uh, doing well. But yeah, he told me that story, my, my cousin and myself, and I was like, man, he he took the opportunity. Huh? Huh? And I missed it, he took it. Sometimes you gotta take that chance. Some I think it's hard when people present you with too good to be true, yeah. and you're older, and yeah. you're like, yeah, okay. But then there's always that one, and mm. you look back and you regret. But yeah, he, he made a lot of good financial decisions, but that story in particular always resonates with me when folks talk about luck and opportunity and chance and blowing stuff blowing opportunities <laughs> yeah shoot money, money is such a it's it's a it's its own enigma mm -hmm. i i personally a, a lot of the way money is made in this world today i i don't think is cool i don't i don't find that agreeable but hey you ain't got to make a million dollars just got to pay the mortgage bill, I guess. Yeah, I mean, an honest dollar, an honest dollar is better than a sneaky dollar. Honest. Most people with sneaky dollars have a lot, but they're sneaky. So. Yeah. I mean, you're kind of giving away your soul somewhat or a piece of yourself. So it's really a moral thing. You know, it's, yeah. it's do I want to be filthy rich and, and you know, cutthroat and, and just do everything that's a business decision? Or do I want to do my best to be a productive member of society? And if I make a good living, great. And I just make best with what I have and like to help others. That's yeah. just kind of the two, in my mind, that's the two mentalities you have now. But it's it's a lot of sneaky, sleuthy stuff out there that, you know, just because you have a lot of money doesn't make you any better than anybody else. We're all human. We all bleed. Yeah. And that's just the way it is. <laughs> Actually, all the people that have had a lot of money that I've met, I really couldn't stand them to begin with. But Yeah, it's, it's because... It's just kind of strange, you know. I was my grandparents raised me, my mom and my dad. My dad was on the job, working a lot. My mom was as well, so my mom's parents raised me, and and they were doing well off, but they never raised me to be like that. No matter what you have, be grateful, be thankful, but help others. Don't don't cut corners. Don't step on others to get higher up on the food chain. Just be a good person, and it will organically, it will naturally happen. Some people try to force it. I think they try to force success. You try to force this, you force that, and it sometimes might take, but it's much easier just to kind of be zen, just sit back and take it in. Mm -hmm. And always remember, whatever is going to happen is going to happen. 
no matter what you say or do, it's going to happen. Nobody can predict the future except for Nostradamus. Besides Nostradamus, who's been very accurate, by the way. A little couple thing hiccups. Anyway, I digress. But <laughs> generally speaking, nobody can really predict the future. And I think when you try to do that, it, it limits you. And it, it puts you in a little bubble that you're trying to get to where you think you have to go. You're yeah. going to get where you have to go regardless. And that bubble turns into a hamster wheel sometimes. Absolutely. Absolutely, with a little like thing hanging with the little like uh, water, like little rabbit stuff. In yeah, there. yeah. You're just trying to get the water because you're thirsty, because you're trying so hard. So just let it go, man. You know, obviously take care of your business, your priorities, things like that, your family, yourself. But don't try to force things. It's a lot of frustration. I found you get a lot of frustration when you try to force things and impose your will. It usually doesn't work out. And then then you start thinking about it and thinking about it and thinking about it, and it just makes it. When something that was really not important, you dwell on it, and suddenly it's Armageddon and everybody's out to get you, and just take a deep breath, it's going to happen, it's going to happen. But, yeah. so, we're here at the shop, the co-working space, the podcast recording studio. Look, let me tell y'all, we are doing this not for big money, we are doing this to help foster small business to help other people get what they want done to do what they got to do and you know I, I guess make dreams happen we just want to we just want to support that support you all and make it happen so Chet man this was fun we got to do yeah. this again <laughs> like I said plenty of time for the next foreseeable future but no yeah it's great <laughs> and uh, as thank you for having me and and thanks for what you're doing man doing something positive like we just spoke about and helping the community. That's what it's all about now. Hi. We, we're trying. All right. Thank y'all. See Wait, you we got to go. I'll, I'll just do my little sign off for you. For Addison Allgood, Chet Hardaway. We'll see you next time. And that's a wrap. Sounds good.